When you're working an NFL game, they're all pros and they're all fast and they're all big. I was the replay official for Super Bowl 42. If you made a call, it was going to be a big call. You didn't miss many calls and stick around. My name's Ken Baker, and I was an NFL referee from 1991 to 2010. I grew up in a small town in the Midwest, Charleston, Illinois. I was the son of a legendary Hall of Fame high school coach here, and our whole family revolved around sports. I graduated from Charleston High School in 1968, and then went on to Eastern Illinois University where I played a little varsity baseball there at Eastern. After college, I did a short time of, of coaching and teaching, but then went on to become an optician. And then officiating became my athletic outlet. And so I started officiating, and uh, my goal was to work in the Big Ten. And uh, I did accomplish that goal. And uh, it was there that the NFL first saw me. I was working a Notre Dame-Purdue game, and they came to see another official. And I got their attention, and I got a call on Monday morning from my, from my supervisor asking me uh, if I'd taken my mom and dad to the game with me. And I said, well, yes, I did. You know, why do you ask? And they said, because the NFL had a scout there, and they followed you when the game was over to see who you left with. And I left with my mom and dad. And I often tell young people, you know, had I left there with a, a beer in one hand and a cheerleader under the other arm, and I would have not gotten in the NFL, and I'd never known why. My Division three supervisor, a gentleman by the name of Jim Keogh, was a dear friend, and he said that I should apply, and so I did. And um, about a year later, then I heard from them, uh, and uh, then you went through the interview process, and they also sent people to Charleston to do a background check on me, and so they checked the office where I worked, they talked with people at the university, they talked to my neighbors, and so that was quite an event for Charleston. We don't get much excitement around here, but I do give them a lot of credit for the time and expense that they go through to ensure the integrity of their officials. There's all sorts of training. At that time, we had two clinics. One of them was in Dallas. There, Red Cashin met me at the airport, and from then on became my mentor and was my first referee and, and just was uh, a prince of a gentleman. And so I, I'm always indebted to Red Cashin and the mentoring he gave me in my first year. This is one of the game balls from the first game that I ever worked, and you can see the detail on there. It's the Houston Oilers playing the LA Raiders. It's got the score, all the officials signed it, and it is very, very dear to me because this was the first NFL game that I worked. It was 9-1, 1991. You were required to have a meeting at two o'clock on Saturday before your Sunday game. You'd go through the previous week's game and every call that you made or should have made or could have made or didn't make, and uh, you, didn't, you didn't miss many calls and stick around. Being a deep official, I would go to one of the locker rooms. You'd walk right through the locker rooms and hear all these you know, star football players, and then you'd go meet with the coach, and the coach would tell you who the captains are. And, and once the game kicked off, it was another football game, other than it was fast. If you work a Michigan, Ohio State, Big Ten game, there might be 10 guys there that go on to the pros. But when you're working an NFL game, they're all pros. And they're all fast, and they're all big. I worked field judge, side judge, back judge. I started out as a field judge, which is one of the deep win guys, but I was always deep because I, I, I ran pretty well. One time our referee went down, and I became the referee. 
I was early in my career, but I was a pretty good rules guy, so they said, yeah, we'll make him referee. And all the old veterans, they put the white hat on me, and I'm back there, and I'm referee. And, and as we broke the huddle, one of the veteran officials, he said, don't mess it up. He didn't say it exactly like that. He, probably used inappropriate language when they said don't mess it up. But NBC caught it on their mic. And when we came back, they replayed it on TV and they called it Sounds of the NFL. And we did hear from the home office about that. We thought we were in the uh, confidence of our own little group here. Well, apparently those mics can hear into those groups as well. So uh, I didn't, I'm glad I didn't say it and I'm glad I didn't mess it up, but uh, later on in the game, our referee got better and came back on the field and I went back to deep. As a deep official, if you made a call, it was gonna be a big call. You know, the officials think a lot of heat. Let's watch it right here. All right, there's possession. There's the right foot down. There comes the left inbounds and field judge Kenny Baker in perfect position. A lot of the stories and an event that you remember don't actually happen on the field. They'll happen before the game or after the game. If too many things happen to you on the field, like I say, you may not stick around very long. There was one time when my family was waiting for me after the game, and our grandson was three years old at the time. We were down below waiting with, with the players' families and, and down around the locker rooms, and. And the three-year-old, uh, Josh, bolted and headed down the hallway, running down the hallway as hard as he could go. And his mother was right after him. And Peyton Manning stepped out of the locker room and Josh ran right into him. Now, to show you the kind of class that the, 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 the Mannings had, you know, he could have said, what's this kid doing down here? You know, I, 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 this is supposed to be a, a family section or whatever. And, and instead, he says, I'm going to get your belly. And so here's Peyton Manning, all six, five of him, bending over, uh, chasing my three-year-old grandson down the hallway. But that shows you, you know, these guys are human. He's not just a Hall of Famer. He's not just a superstar, but he's, he's a, a, you know, a, a great human being also. Another time, we were in our locker room after the game, and I looked up, and Steve Young, the quarterback from the 49ers, was in our locker room. Now, we have big guards outside our locker room with guns, and you don't, nobody gets in our locker room. And I look up, and here's Steve Young in our locker room. And he's talking to our referee, and I asked him, and when it was over, I said, uh, what was Steve Young doing in here? He said he came in to apologize. And I said, for what? And he said he came in to apologize for being rude. He said they were in a speed up, hurry up offense, and, and he, was, he felt that we weren't getting the ball placed down quick enough, and he was trying to hurry us up, and he wanted to apologize for being rude. So now there's, there's the kind of class that you run into at the office. People think that, you know, that the players are always calling you names or whatever. No, they called me sir, or they called me 91, which is my number, and we had a great relationship with them. I was going down what they call Bear Alley to the Bear Locker Room to get the captains and I'm waiting outside the locker room, and somebody behind me, and of course, Bear Alley is a secure corridor. You know, not fans don't run around down in Bear Alley. And, uh, but I heard somebody behind me say, have a good game, ref. And I turned around, and I still remember exactly what I said. I turned around, and I said, Michael, what are you doing here? <laughs> and it was Michael Jordan. He started visiting. I mean, I don't know, there was nobody with him. I remember he had blue jeans on, a black shirt, and a leather coat. And, uh, uh, you know, I guess he had, you gotta be pretty lonely when you wanna talk to a referee. 
So Michael's, Michael Jordan and I are talking back and forth and I have my game card in my hand. And it goes, what, what is that you guys are writing on? He said, can I see that? And I said, sure. And so I handed it to him. I said, we put the captains on there and we marked, marked the penalties and we marked timeouts and a lot of different information. He's, he's unfolding it and looking at it. I could tell he was thrilled to meet me. But he was, uh, but Michael was, and, and, and I said, well, while you're at it, you might as well sign it. Cause, and, and he started signing it, right? Uh, and I said, no, no, don't sign it there. I got to still have to use that card. I said, sign it down there at the bottom where I can still, where I can still use the card. So uh, he signed it down there at the bottom and I, I didn't use it in the game. I got a different card. I kept that one uh, special, but it was a uh, brief, but uh, very enjoyable conversation that we had. Cause I had to go to work. At the time that I worked in the National Football League, it was an advocation. All of the officials at that time had to work another job. We had to get our health insurance. We had to get our benefits someplace else. So at that time, about all the officials had another job. So at that time, I was uh, working at Eastern Illinois University. At the time that I worked in the National Football League, Eastern Illinois University had more head coaches than any university in the country. Eastern Illinois had more head coaches than Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State, Southern Cal. They had Mike Shanahan, Sean Payton, Brad Childress. All three were Eastern graduates. All three were head coaches in the National Football League. And I always called him coach. Never called him Mike, never called him Sean. Uh, Coach Shanahan, Coach Payton. It was just, again, a day, a day at the office. I was the replay official for Super Bowl 42 it was the 2007 season, had a really good year, and I remember I was out on campus. It was a beautiful winter's day, and I got the call from Dean Blandino, and he was very gracious in what he said. He said, we have made a decision that's very popular here in the office, and that is that you're gonna be the, the Super Bowl replay official. It's the same way with players. You know, if you get to the Super Bowl, you're the best in the world at what you do. There's a lot of factors that, that factor in, and a lot of guys have some great careers and never work the Super Bowl. And so you're pretty fortunate if you get a chance to work the Super Bowl. They give you a nice ring, and Sandy's got a nice necklace, which is a duplicate of the ring, and we'll pass those on to our daughter and our grandkids. So that's, uh, yeah, that, that's a nice ring. That's, that's every official's goal, is to get one of those rings just as it is a player to get a Super Bowl ring. Super Bowl 42, we knew it was gonna be an historic game because there's only been one team in history to ever go through a complete season undefeated and then win the Super Bowl, and that was the Miami Dolphins. So we knew going into Super Bowl 42, if New England Patriots with Tom Brady won it, they would be on that same pedestal as the Miami Dolphins. Then on the other hand, you had the New York Giants with Eli Manning, little brother of Peyton Manning. So there was a lot of different storylines around Super Bowl 42. It's always a high profile game, but that one we knew was gonna be special. Because of the team's plan, it was gonna get a lot of attention. Oh my God. This ball's thrown and Ty Regis goes up for it like a basketball player. Harrison trying to knock it down. The biggest call that I was probably ever involved with was the Tyree catch. Here we are 20 years later, and they're still talking about the Tyree catch. That call was made by Scott Helverson, which at that time was the back judge. I was the replay official, and Eli Manning was driving in for the game-winning score against the undefeated at that time, New England Patriots. So it was a historic game. It was a historic catch. At that Super Bowl, I think we had 42 cameras. 
27 of them I had access to on my replay screen. And that's a lot of different angles to look at uh, in 60 seconds. The good news is Coach Coughlin from the Giants called a timeout, so we didn't even have to stop it to, replay, to review one of the biggest catches in Super Bowl history. So during the timeout, we looked at all the different angles because you don't want to miss that one. Uh, they'd still be talking about it if you did. The NFL experience was a great experience, but it's difficult on, on the family. I have a wife and a daughter, and I still have uh, the same wife and the same daughter. When I first got in the NFL, the first phone call Red Cation made as my referee was not to me, it was to my wife, Sandy, because he wanted to visit with her, prepare her for what was in store for me and what was in store for the family. When you get to that level, it doesn't matter if you're a professional athlete or if you're an actor, a congressperson, when you get to that level, there's a lot of people pulling at you in different directions. And so that's the most important thing is to, is to perform at that level and still keep the most important thing, which is the family together.